All right, welcome back to FaceTime with you. And uh, again, we bring you some of the uh, uh, really cool things that are happening here at the University of Utah. And uh, we're, we're going to talk very literally about cool things. Uh, today with us is uh, uh, the Associate Vice President for Research and Professor of Electrical Engineering, uh, Cindy Furse. And uh, you are on your way to somewhere really cool, literally and figuratively. Yes, uh, very cold. <laughs> yeah, and, and you've got a couple of students with you, too. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? Um, my name is David Lubbers. I'm an electrical engineering student working towards my bachelor's degree. Okay. I have plans on uh, getting a master's degree as well. Um, love going to the U. It's an awesome place. Um, my name is Joyce Lynn. I got my doctorate a uh, year ago, and um, I'm here at the U uh, doing some research before I become a faculty member. And it's really exciting that we do have students here. It's, it's one of the key things that a, a world-renowned research university like the U has is not only do students come here to learn, but they actually learn hands-on. Hands -on. And, and this project is going to be very cool. You're going to Antarctica. That's absolutely right. We're and, going to be out on the ice. And tell us what you're going to be doing in Antarctica. We're going to be measuring the electrical properties of sea ice. Sea ice is pretty special because it's got, got both the fresh water and also the very salty brine. And so electrically it's different than other, you know, other types of ice. So we're going to be measuring those in three directions, like up and down, that's different than side to side, and it's also probably different in the direction the current flows. People haven't measured this before, so we're actually going to go find out something nobody knows the answer to today. So why Antarctica? I mean, isn't there frozen seawater other places? Is there a special kind of seawater or a special kind of brine down there? Actually, well, <laughs> so monitoring transport properties in sea ice is particularly important now because of the implications for climate change. And um, polar sea ice, of course, is on everyone's mind in terms of how it's shrinking and growing. So the transport properties lend towards growing or shrinking. And so we'd like to be able to see what that is by directly measuring it. Uh, have any of you ever been to Antarctica before? What are you expecting down there? Cold. <laughs> yeah. Well, it will, be, it will be right at the beginning of the, uh, the, the summer. summer season, right? Yes. So yes. there will be light. I mean, it, it will be light, light pretty much all day. All, all yeah, day. From what I've read about four hours of darkness. That's so, going to be interesting. it will be dusk-like, not really dark. <laughs> and that's all we're going to... That's all we're going to let you sleep. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's all you may be problem. able to sleep. I've spent some time in the Arctic myself, and, and when it's light all the time, your body gets a little messed up by that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we'll be glad to have the time, actually, to do the measurements, because when you go on a trip like this, you want to take total advantage of all the time you've got. So well, you brought some interesting bottles with you that are all wired up. Why don't you lift those up and, and show us those? What, what exactly? Uh, they look high-tech, but they look like you made them yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. We made them ourselves. Do you want to describe these measurements, David? Yeah, so as we decided that we were um, needing to develop a way to measure the electrical properties that we were measuring. Um, we need a way to prove that our methods are actually working. Mm -hmm. um, this is really challenging because nobody knows what we're measuring or what the sea ice that we're measuring should actually look like. So we can't just make a mock-up of sea ice and know that that's accurate and then measure it and know we're getting accurate measurements. So we've actually built these devices, and these are designed to hold um, salt water as well as distilled water. Okay. So we can make various measurements of uh, you know, the conductivity through here, as well as um, capacitance to some different points in there, um, so that we can make measurements on something that is actually has known values mm -hmm. and make sure that our measurements are corresponding with what the values are. Um, and it, seems like it should be really straightforward, but um, when you're talking about with electrical engineering, you've got, um, um, if you measure from like one of these nails to the other nail, mm -hmm. it, it's not a direct measurement because you end up with um, electric and magnetic fields that end up bowing out, and that's really difficult to predict the shape of. So you're going to be experimenting with the experiment, really? Yes, well that's yes. what we're doing here. And so this was actually set up so we could take a measurement and then do some computer simulations and verify from with our measurements and our computer simulations, out of the two of those, are we going to get values that are corresponding with what is actually in this bottle? Because we know what distilled water looks like. Are we getting distilled water values? 
and we have to do that to prove that what we're doing works before we can go and measure something that's unknown. So not, not only are you trying to find out something that nobody's ever found out before, you're finding out the way to find it out. That's right. right. Yes. So we're planning that we'll be taking sea ice cores, which means we're going to be drilling cores that will be about this diameter, mm -hmm. but it'll just be really long. And then we want to measure the conductivity, which is how much current can mm -hmm. go through there. So this is kind of a small mock-up. Our nails will actually be spread further apart in the real example, but this was a good example for us to test in the labs. So we'll drill holes and literally put in nails, just like these nails, and then we'll use two sides here to run a current through them and these two to pick it up. Okay. And that's how we'll be measuring conductivity. And we have these various tests because we need to measure in different directions. So this one's designed to measure along right. the length of the bottle. This one's designed to measure the width yes. across one way and the other. Interesting. And then this one is actually a, kind of a hybrid that we've considered that we may be able to do both directions, two directions at once. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, we'll have to do a lot of mathematics and some simulation to actually separate those two. Yeah. But well, what kind of uh, practical application? Uh, would come from this kind of research and your findings? I mean, I, uh, you know, we're jumping the shark here a little bit. I, I know you don't know what you're going to find yet, but, but what are you hoping to do with your findings? So because sea ice is such a major player in climate change, it's one of seven major categories that people are looking at. Um, if we can, I think we're still maybe a little bit further out from the end goal, but in the end we would like to say something about how the ice pack is changing over time and if we can model it in the future. Um, it's just something that no one's done yet, and we need to know so much more about sea ice than we already do. Now, is there anybody else doing this? I understand you're actually going to be meeting up with some other teams from around the world down there that are going to be mm -hmm. working with you in some way, shape, or form? Actually, the teams aren't necessarily working together. We all have different projects, but they're all on ice. Okay. So we will be learning from them. They will be learning from us. We're pretty excited about that. That's going to be cool. Yeah. And we will be meeting up. I think it's 20 or 30 people that we're expecting to be at the camp with us and we'll be following their projects, they'll be following ours. And at the same time, we'll be able to follow your project too, because while you folks are down there, you're going to be blogging, we'll, we'll be able That's to, right. we'll, we'll put up a uh, URL to let people know where your blog is so they can mm -hmm. kind of follow what you're doing. But, and we started it already. Mm -hmm. so we're hoping that, particularly anybody who's studying math like kids, you know, in the K through 12 schools, anybody who's a teacher or a student or interested in math, if they'll just tell us what math they're studying while we're down there, Pretty much everything that anybody learns about, we use. It shows up in everything. So we would like to show examples of how we've been using various kinds of math while we're down there. Good. And you actually call this a math edition, yes. I believe, is the uh, term you're using for this. Pete's expedition. Yeah. It's really great. Well, good luck to you. Uh, you leave uh, middle of uh, November? We leave November 15th, and we come back December 11th. We hope we come back with some great data and uh, no frostbite. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, if we can get those two things, I think we'll be in great shape. But of course, you yeah. can follow along with the blog as well. We'll make sure you get that URL. Thank you, Cindy. Thanks, guys, for being here, and good luck to you. Have a great trip, and uh, thanks for joining us on FaceTime with you. Okay.